Good afternoon, everyone. All right. First of all, welcome to those of you who are not from Costa Rica. Bienvenidos. Welcome. And to those of you who are from Costa Rica, welcome as well. We're so glad to have you here. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Patrick Goodness. I'm the CEO of The Goodness Company. And we have a public relations, marketing, and advertising agency. And we're specifically focused in healthcare marketing and very specifically focused in medical tourism marketing. We've been working in the healthcare industry for over 20 years now and in the, over the past several years really focused in medical tourism marketing. Now we could talk for hours and hours about medical tourism marketing. What I've done today is I've prepared for you a short lecture on what I consider to be one of the most, some of the most important facets today of medical tourism marketing. It's very easy to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in advertising to get patients to come to your clinic. That's very easy. The key is how do you spend less and still drive patients to your door? How do you create messaging that generates interest, gets people to know you, to like you, and to trust you? Because those are the foundations of relationship marketing. So what we're going to start with, we're going to talk about two things today. Very simply, we're going to talk about public relations marketing, and we're going to talk about video marketing. My good friend Rogers is also part of uh, the Goodness Company team. He's already spoken about internet marketing, spoken about search engine optimization, critical tools in driving patients to your door. What I'm going to focus on starting right now is public relations marketing. So first of all, what is public relations? Public relations is very simply storytelling for your business. Everyone has a story to tell. Each one of us here has a story to tell. When you sit down and you talk with your patients, when you talk with your staff, what I want you to think about is, what is your story? What is your patient's story? If everyone has a story to tell, it's your job as the managers, as the presidents of your company, to tell your story. Because if you don't tell your story, I can assure you of one thing, no one else will tell your story for you. No one else cares about your business as much as you do. So it's critical that you learn and discover what your story is and start to tell it. Become passionate about your story. Each one of you here, I see dentist friends, I see surgeon friends, I see all kinds of specialists in this audience. Each one of you has stories from your clients that you can tell about people who have come to your offices and that you've saved 5,000, $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 on their medical care, on their dental care. People whose lives that you've changed. Think about those stories because those are the stories that create relationships. Those are the stories that people want to hear and they need to hear to know about you. If our goal in relationship marketing is getting people to know you, to like you, and to trust you, our first job is getting them to know you. And in order to get them to know you, we have to tell your story. So I challenge each one of you to think about your story. Think about, we call it our unique selling proposition. What makes you different? But it's not just good enough to be different. You have to know what makes you better. People don't choose different. People choose better. So when you're considering what makes you different, also consider what makes you better and tell that story because that's the story that will differentiate you in the marketplace and will drive patients to your door. Every single day, patients will be going online looking for solutions. Provide them with a solution. Provide them with a story that tells them, that shows them, that demonstrates that you have the solution that they're looking for. And if they see in your story something that matches what they're looking for, they're gonna give you a call and you have a competitive edge. So what are our goals in public relations? The first goal of public relations is to get noticed positively. Like I said, it's not just enough to get noticed. There's all kinds of bad public relations where you get noticed for the wrong reasons. Our television is full of it. The Boston Marathon, Britney Spears, all of these kinds of, I, I could go on and on about negative publicity. 
They get our attention, but not in the way that we want to publicly or positively associate with our business. So we want to be noticed positively. More importantly, once we've been noticed, the key is to make a connection. Once we have someone's attention, the key then is to develop a relationship. Because if we're focused only on continuing to sell and to talk about ourselves, what we fail to do is we fail to make a connection. And in order to make a connection, we have to do one thing, and that's to listen. To shut up long enough to listen to what they have to say so that we can respond. One of the great stories I like to talk about with regards to listening is the difference between Starbucks and Borders bookstore. Just five to seven years ago, Starbucks and Borders were about the same. They were both bookstores, essentially. Or I shouldn't say co uh, Starbucks was, but they, they offered coffee. Uh, Borders had actually an advantage in that they had a full bookstore. They offered coffee, they offered uh, all the different cakes and scones and the great things that Starbucks offered as well. But one day, people walked into Starbucks and they said, you know what would be great? Free internet. We would stay here all day long if there was free internet. And Starbucks said, hey, you know what? That's a really good idea. We should offer free internet. At the same time, people approached Borders with the exact same concept. They said, you should provide free Wi-Fi. And you know what Borders said? Nah. We don't want people sticking around all day. We want to turn people over. We want them to come in, buy their book, get their coffee and their scones, and be out the door. Now, how many Borders bookstores have, have you been into recently? Anyone? No, because Borders is out of business. And now Starbucks is one of the largest chains in the world. I think it's adding, I think, something like 213 chains every single month around the world. So what it shows you is that it's the power of listening. They heard an opportunity, and they listened to it. Too often we're talking, too often we're trying to tell people what we want, and we forget that one of the greatest opportunities we have is to listen, and that's where we use social media. Some people say, hey, you know what, I don't want people to go on my social media page and write something negative. Well, you know what, if they're not writing it on your Facebook page, they're probably saying it to their friends, and if they write it on your Facebook page, you have an opportunity to respond and to show people how you can respond positively to negative concerns. It's an opportunity for growth. It's a challenge to excel. And so I would encourage all of you to use those tools that you have at your disposal to listen and to make that connection. Before you start your PR effort, you need to know your market. Who do you want to reach? Too many times we say, well, we want to reach, we want new patients. We want to reach people. Well, who do you want to reach? We can't possibly afford to reach everyone. We don't have enough money in our pockets. I don't care how wealthy you are, you do not have enough money in your pockets to reach 333 million Americans to get them through the introduction, the recognition, and the call to action process. And if you try, you'll be broke before you get a chance to earn your first patient. So I encourage you to think about niche markets. There are incredible niche markets in the United States and Canada and even in Latin America that we can tap. And it takes much less money to reach them we can focus our efforts, focus our communications, reach them more efficiently, and drive patients through our door. But first, we have to know what our market is. How many of you here have a business plan for your business? Okay, how many of you have a marketing plan for your business? Now, how many of you follow your marketing plan? Okay, the hands dropped about 50% on that one. It's not just enough to have the plan. Obviously, having a plan is important. But to follow that marketing plan and to know your market is one of the first steps of that plan. Have clear goals and, ex and expectations. So many times I hear people say, well, we want to get as many patients as we can. Okay, well, what does that mean? Because I can create a marketing plan for you that helps you make one million, that helps you make five million, that helps you make 10 million, but I probably can't help you if you want to make 20 billion. So the key is to have clear goals and expectations, and then we can create a plan to help you execute those goals. Remember the basic three rules for marketing success. Advertising, advertising is a three-step process. Introduction is where we introduce who we are, why we're different, why we're better. Recognition, we want them to see us a second time. So that's why branding is critical. If we change our branding consistently, people forget that they've seen us. People forget that they've, if they've come to our website and then they see us at a conference and they see something different about us. Well, are you the same person I saw on your website? Or is this brochure the same brochure that I, it doesn't match anything that you have? 
The key is to make sure that when we introduce ourselves, that the next time that they see us, that they recognize us. Because it's critical in this next step to call to action. If we continue to introduce ourselves, and we introduce ourselves newly each time, if we introduce ourselves differently each time, we never get to the recognition because they forget who we are. And I'm not talking about us personally, I'm talking about our companies. If they see us online, and then they see a video about us, and the video is completely different than our website, or they get our brochure package in the mail, and our brochure package is completely different than our, brochure, than our website, they won't recognize that there's a connection between our companies. And our goal is to get them to the call to action. Everything works in a triadic process. Introduction, recognition, call to action. And the goal at the call to action stage is also dual-fold. Call to action can be done either as a positive call to action, a negative call to action, or a latent call to action. So positive call to action is, do you want to do business with us? Yes, we're interested. Negative is very clear. No, we don't want to do business with you. More often than not, and particularly in the world of medical tourism, the answer is a latent call to action. And the latent call to action is, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I want to do business with you yet. And a lot of people take that as a no. So if you hear that someone isn't interested, the question is, what do you do with that lead? More often than not, what we do with that lead is we set it aside and we forget about it. But what they're really saying is, I'm not ready to make the decision yet. But if you can help me, if you can pay more attention to me, differentiate yourself to me, and show me why I should say yes to you, at the end of the day, all of our efforts are focused on one word. And that one word is yes. Yes. Everything we do is focused on trying to get someone to say yes. And so consequently, if we fail to get them to say yes to us, we've wasted all of our time and energy in the introduction and recognition stage, and we never get them to the call to action stage. What's the sense of marketing unless we get them to the call to action stage? And if we don't turn that latent call to action into a yes, we've spent all this time and all this money and all of this energy focused on nothing. So the key is when you have that lead, how do we focus that lead? How do we nurture that lead? How do we get that lead to understand more about us so we get them to say yes? This is the process of advertising. So what we're gonna talk about now is we're gonna move into the top 10 tips and tactics for public relations success. One of the keys is when we talked about relationship development is we want to be able to work as partners with journalists. There was an important study that just came out, I believe, by the uh, US Board of Labor Relations. They talked about the five worst jobs in the United States. And it just came out yesterday. Do you want to know what the top number one worst job in the United States is? Newspaper journalist. They've dropped 70% of the newspaper reporters in the United States of America over the last 10 years and they make less now than most truck drivers. So they've gone through college, many of them with master's degrees, that worked in the newspaper and writing business for years, and now they make far less than their peers who are in corporate jobs, and they make far less than even public, public servants. So part of the, the concern that we have here is the number of journalists is decreasing rapidly, but here's an issue for, here's an opportunity. These are the most overworked, underpaid, underappreciated people in the United States, which means that if we pay them some attention, if we help them with their job, we're going to create an opportunity for ourselves. So don't waste a journalist's time. Help them. If you see the way a journalist writes, for example, most of us are in the practice of writing a press release, sending it out, putting it on the web, and hoping that our press release gets picked up. How often does that happen? How often does your press release get picked up by a local newspaper or by a national newspaper or by the television? Almost never. Why? Because they don't have the time to look through the 25,000 plus press releases that are distributed online every single day. It's your job, it's your public relations agency's job to create relationships with the media in the United States on your behalf, to help them create opportunities to promote your business. But if you want to get that promotion, help them out. Don't waste a journalist's time. If it's not news, 
if what you're sending out is information that doesn't matter, that you wouldn't even read the press release yourself, don't write it. Don't send it out. If it doesn't matter to you, no one else will care about it either. Don't waste your time. Save your time and your energy for things that you're passionate about, for things that make a difference, and for things that will change people's mind and will drive patients to your door. Write press releases, write stories that show people who you are, that communicate your, the nature of your business and why you're different and why you're better. Otherwise, it's wasting a journalist's time and it's better to keep it to yourself. Use strong visuals. If you have great photos, if you have videos to attach, attach those with your press release. Attach them with your story article. Attach all of those ideas and let them know, hey, there's more where this came from. If you're interested in this story idea, I can get you lots more photos. But here's just a couple. And please make sure that you take them with a decent camera. If you can, hire a photographer. I know it's expensive. I know sometimes it can seem like the costs just keep piling up. But these are some ways that you can truly save dollars on large-scale advertising. We're talking about now an opportunity we've done for our clients in this past year. We got them on ABC News in the United States. Now, it costs them $500 to $1,000 for video footage. But imagine now advertising for two minutes on a television show on ABC News. The cost for that would be well over $250,000. And they spent $1,000 to get it. I think there's considerable value there. So I encourage you to think about what you can do to create interest and make sure that using strong, using strong videos, using strong visuals is a great way to help connect with your, with your target market. New, names make news. Use names to help get your stories across. So for example, if you don't have a story to tell necessarily, draw a comparison. For example, maybe you're talking about if, for example, stem cell research. Well, if you're talking about stem cell research, there's a lot of people who are interested in that. But there's even more people who are interested in it because a quarterback from a famous football team went to Austria to get stem cell surgery. If you can draw that comparison, put his name inside of the press release, guess what? Your press release now jumps to the top because there's going to be far more people looking for that press release because of that sports person's name than they will about stem cell research. So you've used someone else's name, you've used a superstar to boost your press release and to gain more interest. Now this is a story that might get picked up by ESPN, might get picked up by Sports Illustrated. These are story opportunities that you've created for yourself in markets that you may have never considered because you've pulled in someone's name that people already know and recognized. So we call it an argumentum ad hominem. You're leveraging a person's name to raise and elevate the status of your cause. And that's what we need to do to, for good public relations. Become a reliable source. If newspaper writers don't have the time to research their stories, become their source. Become their source for medical tourism. Become their source on dental. Become their source on plastic surgery. And when they need information, they'll come to you first. When you become a reliable, trusted source, you become they're basically their crutch. They don't have the time, they'll give you a call. Art writers give me a call all the time to say, hey, can you research this? Can you provide me with some information? And guess what I do? I give them information about my clients. I give them information that's reliable, that's high quality, and they can use that information to write a story. That's the benefit. You can use those relationships to help bolster your business. Good content equals confidence. If you're going to provide them with good, good content, they're going to have confidence in you. And confidence creates opportunity for your business. Focus on women. More often than not, doctors in this business are men. Men know men. We think we know women. We don't. We know men. And so what we do is we market to people that we know, don't we? We go to people and we talk about things that we know. Well, men don't know much about women. That's pretty apparent. And so consequently, when we try talking about things that we don't know, we just look stupid. So the key is, is to find someone who knows what they're talking about and to start creating information that speaks to women. Because believe it or not, women 45 plus make or influence 80% of all household and healthcare decisions in North America. So if you are not communicating with women, 
I hope you enjoy the 20% of the business that you're going to be earning. Because the other 80% is going to be going to the people who understand, who appreciate, and who can communicate successfully with the female marketplace. It's that important. I'm going to come back to this point time and time again. It's in big letters for a reason. We focus so much on the things that we know, and we go after publications. You know what? What are the chances of being published in the New York Times or the Washington Post? Very slim. But now, there are over 300 women's magazines in the United States. What do you think the chances are that one of those might be interested in your story? And if you can create a story that's custom tailored to them, they're going to be interested in your ideas. Because you've come to them, you've addressed them particularly, which brings me to my next point, which is write for your audience. One size does not fit all. When you send out a press release trying to talk to everyone, what you essentially do is you talk to no one. Because everyone wants to know about how this story impacts them. And if you can create stories, if you can write articles that address particular needs of an audience, you can win this opportunity. You can win their attention, you can create opportunities, and you can drive business to your door. Good PR takes time and it takes persistence. And on top of that, I should have mentioned it takes patience. More often than not, we get calls from people who say, okay, I need to bring in patients next month. What can I do? And I tell them you should have called me 11 months ago. That's what you should have done. We can't achieve exceptional results in one month, in two months. All of our retainers for our clients are two-year retainers for a very simple reason. At six months, you won't like me at all. At 12 months, you'll barely tolerate me. At about 16 months, you'll start to see the results of what I'm talking about, and we might be friends. And at two years, you're ready to hire me again. And that's why we do two-year retainers, because it takes two years to develop a strong marketing program. And if you're not willing to invest two years in a marketing program, go into another business. And I'm telling you honestly, I don't mean to scare you away, but if you are not willing to invest in marketing for two years to create relationships with your customers, there are a lot of other great businesses out there for you, but this isn't it. So if you're gonna do this, and there's huge opportunity, huge global opportunity, be prepared to invest for the long haul. And there's huge opportunity. We're working with a dentist right now in Costa Rica, and he's quadrupled his business over the last six months. He is driving more business. He's doubles his business month after month for the past three months now. And it's exciting to see this. It's exciting to see the opportunities that are being created. But he didn't like it back when we were paying $15,000 a page for advertising six and seven months ago. He wasn't sure where this was going to go. But he had faith, and now we're there, and now he continues to invest because he sees the payoff. So it's the same thing with public relations. Relationships take time. And relationship with media vehicles takes time. If you're gonna be talking with Time Magazine, if you're gonna be talking with the Washington Post, Cosmo, Shape Magazine, whoever you're talking with, you're gonna to have to build relationships, and that's predicated on the basics of relationship marketing. If you remember nothing else from what I talk about today, I hope that you'll remember these three things. Everything that we do, whether we're talking with the media, or whether we're talking with patients, whether we're talking with family members, is predicated on the basics of relationship marketing. Our goal is to get people to know us, number one, to like us. People do business with people they like. It's just that simple. You may be the best doctor in the world, you may be the best dentist, but if they don't know you, they will never get a chance to like you. And if they don't like you, they will never trust you. And if they do not trust you, they will never do business with you. It's just that simple. So everything that you do should be focused on building relationships, whether it's with the media, whether it's with your customers, your clients, your patients, or with the family members who influence those decisions. Everything should be focused on getting them to know you, to like you, and to trust you. Above all, don't sell. We're not in the business of selling. We're in the business of providing solutions. Every single day, people around the world wake up the exact same way. They wake up with concerns. They wake up with problems. And those problems require solutions. If you're trying to sell them something, how likely are they to hear what you're selling? When do you like to be sold something? How many of us like to be sold something? 
How many of us like the idea of used car salesmen? No one does, because we feel that we're being sold something, and no one likes to be sold. But how many of us now want solutions every single day? How many of us want to partner with people who have solutions, who can make our lives better, who can make our lives easier? Those are the people we want on our team. Those are the people that we know, those are the people that we like, and those are the people that we trust. So consequently, when we focus on selling, we push people away. We do the opposite of what we want them to do. But when we focus on providing solutions, what we do is we draw them in. Because what we're saying is, I'm not concerned about selling you something. I'm concerned about helping you. And who doesn't need help? So focus on providing solutions, and you will earn their business. Be available. When the press calls you, if they call you, you've done something right to get them to call you, don't make them wait. They've got 50 other people that they can call. Recognize that you're one on a list of people. And the same thing with your patients. Respond quickly. But more importantly with the press, this can impact millions of people. Respond seconds after they reply to you. One of the keys to our success in the agency business is that when someone sends me an email, I respond almost instant instantaneously to let them know that we are available now. Because they didn't send me an email now to talk to me two hours from now. They sent me an email now because they're thinking about it right now. And if they know that I'm available right now, I've got that story. And that's when my clients win because I can get that story for them. So I encourage you to be available. When you build those relationships, be available to them. And number 10, if you don't have the time or the energy, hire someone who does. Because I recognize that most of you are doctors, owners of medical clinics, owners of hospitals. You don't have the time to do your own public relations and your own marketing. But that doesn't mean it shouldn't be done. It means that you need to find a partner that you trust to work with. Let's talk a little bit about the baby boomer market. We've talked about the female market, but I want to encourage you to think about the baby boomer market. If you could all for just one second, close your eyes and picture a baby boomer. Tell me what that baby boomer looks like. Just shout out some ideas. What does a baby boomer look like? Me. What's that? Me. Looks like you. Okay, come on up here. <laughs> come on up here. This man says that all baby boomers look like him. Well, not all. So what I want to show you is, first of all, baby boomers control 70% of the income. But did you know that Brad Pitt is a baby boomer? See the, rec see, see the resemblance here? George like Clooney? <laughs> it's, like they're, it's like they're brothers. It's like they're brothers. George Clooney is a baby boomer. Bruce Springsteen is a baby boomer. Madonna is a baby boomer. So what I'm trying to get across here is that what we think of as baby boomers is very different in many respects to what the baby boomer generation truly is. We many times think of baby boomers as someone, they're, they're big, they're overweight, they're, you know, they, they, they basically don't do anything. They're, they're sitting around the house waiting, retirement. We have these awful pictures of baby boomers in our mind when the reality is, is that baby boomer generation is a very vibrant and active audience and they're seeking ways of looking younger, staying active, and being more involved in their lives and in their children's lives and in their grandchildren's lives than at any other point in human history. The baby boomer generation is the largest, most affluent segment in all of human history. Not in our history, in all of human history. So consequently, when we're thinking about marketing, who should we be marketing to? Baby boomer women. That's where the money is. <laughs> I'm sorry, it, that is exactly where the money is. Women, 55 plus, and the numbers show it out here in Costa Rica. Take a look at the statistics of the amount of people who come to Costa Rica and what they're doing. 55%, I believe, of medical tourists uh, and, and for, for procedures and dental procedures are women 55 plus who are coming down to Costa Rica for cosmetic dental procedures. They don't need to have the work done, but they want to look better. They want to feel better. They want to live better. So consequently, baby boomers are a vibrant, healthy, and lucrative audience. And if you understand this market, you're going to increase your profits. Baby boomers represent close to $80 million 80 million U.S. consumers, I'm sorry, and 70% of the U.S. disposable income. Baby boomers spend more time and more money online each month than genera Generation X and Generation Y. 
everyone talks about the young generation spending time online. They spend a lot of time, oh, exactly. They spend lots of time online, but you know what? They're living at home with their baby boomer parents and grandparents. <laughs> they don't have the money to buy what you're talking about. So if you're focused on selling to these kids, you're gonna wasting your time and your money. Focus on their grandparents, that's where the money's at. And I've got some great statistics for you. 53% are on Facebook, 40% are likely to use an iPhone. People over the age of 50 spend $7 billion online annually. They purchase 62.5% of new cars, and they purchase 80% of luxury travel. Take a look at this again. We're in medical tourism. 80% of luxury travel is purchased by baby boomers. So if you're not focusing on them, you're missing your market. Boomers also spend the most on healthcare, the most on pharmaceuticals. One in seven boomers cares for a parent or family member. So not only are they interested in your medical services, they're also the decision makers for their aging parents. 71% of baby boomers go online every day, and 66% of boomers send text messages. So these are all ways that we can build market opportunities. Here's the most important rule of public relations. Perception is everything. You are what people think you to be. You may be the best at what you do, but if your patients or their marketplace doesn't know you, they certainly can't care about you, and if they don't know you, you don't exist as an option, and if you don't exist as an option, they can't do business with you. It's just that simple. What patients see is what they believe. I hear all the time from people, my website really sucks, but it really isn't that important, is it? I, was, I don't know. If you don't think that first impressions make a difference, I guess not. Uh, if you're really not interested in 88% of the marketplace that makes their decisions for healthcare online, I, I guess that's not that important. But what patients see about you is what they believe. So if you tell your patients that you speak and your staff speaks fluent English, and yet when they go to your dental website, instead of the word for teeth, they see the word teets, T-E-E-T-S. I've seen this 20 times in the past year on dental websites. From people that we call them, we let them know about it, and they tell us, no, their website's perfect. It was written by an American. I said, okay, great, good luck to you. But what patients see is what they believe. And so consequently, if you tell them that you are detail-oriented, and yet the last photo that you have of yourself is when you graduated from medical school in the 1970s, how detail-oriented are you? When they see on your website and they see in your press releases information about your company that's misspelled, wrong photos, dead links. What are you saying to your patients? You're saying to them, I really don't care what you think. And in a competitive marketplace, what they will say to you is absolutely nothing because they will never call you. You will never hear problems about your website because people don't care what they will do is they will simply go away from your website and they will find someplace else. Okay, what they believe about you is what they remember. And what they remember about you is how they base their decisions. So who you are is exactly what people remember. So take the time to thoughtfully craft your brand, to thoughtfully craft what it is that you do, who you are, and why it is that what you do is important, different, and better. How to get noticed. If you want to get noticed online, today what people are searching for is content. People want information. It's great to have a wonderful website. It's very important. But that information, that website needs to be filled with good quality content and information. Be passionate. Be enthusiastic. Have fun. When you're talking with the media, when you're talking with the press, with magazine writers, newspaper writers, take the time to enjoy the, the opportunity to spend time with them. If it's all about business for you, they're going to get that, and they're not going to write about it. Like at the end of the day, people do business with people that they like, so enjoy what you do. Show them that you love what you do, and they will take every opportunity to help your business grow. Valuable PR tips. Please take a, a moment, if, if, if you remember nothing here, to write some of these down. 
Write down the words and the phrases that people use to search for businesses like yours. This is a lot of the work that uh, Rogers and, and our team do to work on SEO marketing. We take the phrases, we take the words that people associate with our business. If you're a dentist, what are the phrases that people look for when they're searching for you? Write these phrases down and then integrate that into content on your website. Write articles, write press releases filled with those phrases. Publish this content on your website or post it to your PR sites. The search engines will reward you in those areas by ranking you higher. Because at the end of the day, Google has one job. We think that Google's job is to, to, you know, to, uh, to take advertising and to make really cool algorithms. But at the end of the day, Google's job is very simple. Their job is to give a positive search result to people's search queries. So if someone is looking for information on plastic surgery in Mexico, and you are a plastic surgeon in Mexico, write about the different types of plastic surgery procedures. Write about the city that you're in. Write about the cities that people can come to you close to. And when you tie all of those phrases together, when Google is going to be, when someone searches in plastic surgeon Cancun, if you are a surgeon, a plastic, if you're a plastic surgeon in Cancun and you've written articles, if your website has great content about that, you're going to be rated higher up. Obviously, you need to have someone working on your search engine optimization, on your search engine marketing. That's all critical, but it starts with good quality content on your website. How to get your press release or articles published? Again, relationships. Editors and writers are people. Get to know them. Find out when their birthday is. Find out when their kids' birthdays are. If they're really important, find out when their anniversary is. And you don't have to send gifts even sometimes, but it's very nice that they get an email. We make sure with some of our top writers that we send a special reminder. Maybe we send a gift basket. Maybe we send a bottle of wine. Maybe we send a gift certificate to their favorite restaurant or to the deli that's just down the street from where they work. What do you think the chances are that when I call them the next time, they're going to take my call after I've sent them a $25 gift certificate to their favorite deli or if I've remembered their daughter's birthday? I sent a little note to them. Facebook today makes it so easy. Connect with these people, remember them, let them know who you are and show them that your business is worth remembering. Writers and editors are busier than ever trying to produce quality editorial. They don't have the help that they used to have. They have to do this oftentimes alone. And now many times a single writer works with three or four newspapers or three or four different websites. Help them out. Send them good quality content. And what I mean by that is don't send them press releases about your business. Write an article that you would want to read. And when you, re when you write that article, send it out as though you were reading that article and read the style of the magazine, the style of the newspaper. Create that editorial in the way that they write it because what they can do then is they can read this and put it right on their website with minor editing. You've just helped them do their job and they're going to remember you. Provide good quality articles. Become a trusted, reliable source and that your business will benefit from it. In the end, consistent, persuasive public relations delivers more results than paid advertising. You can spend all kinds of money on advertising and certainly advertising is important. You can't forget about advertising in the mix, but public relations is critical. Now we're gonna talk just a few minutes about online video marketing. How many of you have invested in videos for your business? Okay, a few of you, great. Cisco predicts that by 2015, 80% of all internet traffic will be video based. I'm going to say that again. 80% of all internet traffic worldwide will be video based. So let's assume for a second that the most important internet company in the world is wrong. That the billions of dollars that they've invested in this research is absolutely wrong. Let's say that it's wrong by 50% and that only 40% of the internet will be video based by 2015. How important is that for your business? If you don't have video, if you don't have good quality video about your business that describes who you are, what you do, why you're different, and why you're better, you're going to be missing out on 80% of the internet marketplace by 2015. That's two years from now. Invest in video brochures, video newsletters, video communications, and you will earn more patience. Quality is critical for healthcare video marketing. It's not enough to take the camcorder that your son got for his first communion or for high school graduation 
and to shoot it out in the backyard and to shoot some interesting videos of your, of your clients or your patients. It's really important that you invest in quality because people will make a decision about your business based on the impressions that they see in your videos. This is your chance to show customers who you are, what makes you different, and what makes you better. Discuss services, discuss quality, but more importantly, communicate benefits. Assume for a second that all medical services are good quality. More often than not, do you know what we do when we create our brochures and our videos and our websites? We talk about how good our quality is. I want to know the dental clinics and the hospitals that hired all of the doctors that got C's and D's in medical school. They're out there, they're working for someone, but yet everyone talks about how they have the best quality doctors, the highest quality standards, and at the end what it sounds like is nothing. If everyone's best is the lowest bottom line, it's no longer the best anymore, is it? So if everyone has high quality doctors, and you're selling high quality doctors, it's noise. If you're selling great procedures and everyone offers great procedures, low prices, if everyone offers low prices, it's just noise in the background. How do you differentiate your business? Take a look at your competition. Take a look at how people are selling. Take a look at how your competitors are earning patients and find out how they're positioning themselves. If you do the exact same thing, you will sound like them, you will look like them, and you'll be competing with them for their clients. If you do something different, if you change your brand, if you offer something different and better, what you'll do is you'll elevate the playing field and you will earn a different kind of business. You'll compete on a different level. So what we want to do is we want to communicate benefits, how you're different, how you're better. At the end of the day, people want solutions. Everyone wakes up needing solutions. Give them a solution and they'll give you their business. When you're creating videos, it's important to brand your videos. But brand your videos. Make sure that every one of your videos is similar so that when they see it, remember we talked about introduction, recognition, call to action? Make sure that when they see one of your videos and then they see another one of your videos, that they look similar, that the branding shows through, that they recognize that this is your company. Use testimonials. If you've got patients, again, this is telling your story. This is one of the basic rules of public relations. If you have patients that love what you do, and I'm sure every one of you here has patients who love what you do, get those patients to talk. Get them to go on camera and to tell their story, to tell them why they love what you do. If you can do that, that passion's gonna shine through. That passion's gonna communicate to other patients. It's gonna say to them, this is your dentist. This is your plastic surgeon. This is your bariatric surgeon. Why? I don't know them, but look at how much they love him. If they love him so much, I want to get to know this person. If they speak with passion, you're going to earn that business. And that's showing happy, satisfied patients. Nothing will sell your business. Absolutely nothing will sell your business more than positive, passionate patients. Include information about tourism. This is important. We're all here in medical tourism, medical travel. And yet what we talk about in our videos, what we talk about on our websites is the medical side. We've forgotten some of the tourism elements. We've forgotten to make it important to show them that this can be fun. This doesn't need to be about having a difficult time. We want to show them that you can have a great time. And maybe it's not necessarily a, a, a vacation, but it can be a very enjoyable experience that they'll remember, that they'll treasure, and that they'll recommend to their for friends and their family. Remember that for most people, this event will change their lives. For most people, this will be the first time traveling out of the country. This will be the first time experiencing another culture. This will be their first time trying new things in a foreign country and meeting people on a substantive, meaningful basis in a foreign culture. This is your opportunity to show these people what true hospitality is. And we can show that in a video. Unlike any other tool, video allows you to see that and to experience it firsthand and to imagine, to close your eyes and to picture 
what that experience could be like. Only video has that power. Include information about and tips about the destination. Include information about sightseeing, shopping, activities, restaurants, hotels. These are all an important part of the process. They're making a decision, yes, to come to you. But keep in mind that the medical tourism decision is really a five-step process. The first piece is making the decision to leave home. That's number one. Before you get them to even think about coming to your place, to come to your clinic, they have to make the decision to leave home. Number two, they have to make the decision to come to your country. Is your country safe? Is it secure? Do they feel as though they're welcome to come visit your country? Number three, once they've visited, they've decided on the country, what about the city? Is the city safe? Is it welcoming? Is it hospitable? Are there things to do? Is it a destination that will warrant a visit? And then number four is the facility. Is the facility quality? Is it a good location? Do you have a great staff? And the number five is the, the doctor decision. I don't care how great the decision is to leave home, come to the country, come to the city, come to the facility. If they do not have a relationship with the doctor, they will never choose you. At the end of the day, people choose the doctor. They choose to have an experience with a physician. And so consequently, if your video doesn't show that opportunity for a relationship with a physician, you've missed your opportunity. And part of this is to get the physicians talking about how enjoyable this medical vacation can be. That's the point, isn't it? It's really to get people to think about not only that they're going to get great medical care, but that they're picturing their vacation. Because at the end of the day, if they're already picturing their vacation, they've already said yes to you. They've already made a decision to come, which means they've already made a decision to say yes. So it's our job to get them to think that this is more than just a visit to a doctor. This is a medical vacation. And really, that's what it's all about, right? Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.